Have you ever wondered why you feel the way you do? What's happening in your brain when you're swept up in a wave of emotion? These are questions that have intrigued scientists and philosophers for centuries. Emotions are a fundamental part of the human experience, shaping the way we perceive and interact with the world around us. From the thrill of joy to the pang of sorrow, emotions color our lives in myriad hues. Emotions are not just abstract concepts or mere feelings. They are deeply rooted in our biology, serving an evolutionary purpose. From an evolutionary perspective, emotions have been instrumental in promoting survival. Fear, for instance, triggers a fight or flight response, preparing us to confront or escape potential threats. On the other hand, emotions like love and empathy foster social bonding, enabling us to form strong interpersonal relationships, which are crucial for our survival as a social species. Diving into the neural landscape of emotions, we encounter the limbic system, a complex network of brain structures nestled deep within the brain. The limbic system, which includes the amygdala, the hippocampus, and the hypothalamus, is often referred to as the emotional command center of the brain. These structures work in harmony, orchestrating our emotional responses. The amygdala, for instance, plays a pivotal role in processing emotions like fear and anger. The hippocampus, on the other hand, is involved in forming emotional memories. And the hypothalamus, well, it's like the conductor of this neural orchestra, regulating the physiological responses associated with emotions. Then there are the chemical messengers of emotion, neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. These neurotransmitters modulate our mood, influencing our emotional states. This, of course, is just scratching the surface of the intricate relationship between emotions and the brain. As we dive deeper into this fascinating world, we will explore how the brain regulates emotions, what happens when this regulation goes awry, and how understanding the neurobiology of emotions can give us profound insights into mental health and human behavior. So buckle up as we embark on this intriguing journey. As we dive deeper, we will explore the fascinating world of emotions and the brain. The human brain, a marvel of nature, has a specialized system dedicated to emotions, the limbic system. This is the heart, or perhaps more accurately, the command center of our emotional experiences. Imagine it as a symphony conductor, orchestrating various sections of the brain to create the rich tapestry of feelings we experience. Let's start with the amygdala, the brain's alarm system. This almond-shaped set of neurons plays a crucial role in processing emotions, particularly fear and anxiety. It's like the watchful sentry, always on high alert, ready to trigger a fight or flight response at the slightest hint of danger. The hippocampus, on the other hand, is like the brain's librarian. It's crucial for memory, particularly in forming new ones and connecting them to our emotions. Ever wondered why certain smells or sounds can evoke powerful emotional memories? That's the hippocampus at work, linking our senses to our emotions. Then there's the hypothalamus, the brain's thermostat, if you will. It maintains our body's internal balance or homeostasis. It also plays a key role in emotional responses by triggering the release of hormones that can affect our mood and emotions. Think of it as the control knob, adjusting our emotional temperature to keep us in balance. Together, these three play a symphony of emotions within us. The amygdala sounds the alarm, the hippocampus evokes memories, and the hypothalamus adjusts the emotional thermostat. They work in harmony, conducting the complex orchestra of our emotions. But what happens when this system is out of sync, when the conductor loses control of the orchestra? That's when we experience emotional turbulence, from the highs of elation to the lows of despair. It's a delicate balance, and when it's disrupted, it can lead to emotional disorders. So the next time you feel a surge of emotion, remember the limbic system is hard at work. It's not just you reacting to the world, but a complex, beautiful symphony playing out inside your brain. What if I told you that tiny molecules in your brain could determine your mood? Yes, you heard that right. These microscopic entities are known as neurotransmitters, and they play a pivotal role in modulating our emotional states and mood. Let's start with a fan favorite, dopamine. Often referred to as the feel-good neurotransmitter, dopamine is associated with feelings of pleasure and reward. It's what makes you feel happy when you bite into your favorite pizza 
or when you finally beat that challenging level on your video game. But dopamine is not just about feeling good. It also plays a critical role in motivation, making us strive for those rewards. Next up, we have serotonin. This neurotransmitter is a mood stabilizer. It helps regulate our sleep, appetite, and even our social behavior. Ever wondered why you feel content and relaxed after a good meal? That's serotonin at work. Now let's talk about norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline. This neurotransmitter is involved in our body's stress response. It heightens our state of alertness and prepares us for action. Picture a deer in headlights. That's norepinephrine helping the deer decide whether to fight or take flight. But it's not just these three neurotransmitters. There are several others, each with their unique roles in our emotional landscape. GABA, for instance, helps us calm down, while glutamate is involved in our cognitive functions. Here's the fascinating part. These neurotransmitters don't work in isolation. They interact and influence each other, creating a delicate balance that shapes our emotions and moods. Too much or too little of any one neurotransmitter can tip this balance, leading to a range of emotional disorders. So the next time you're feeling a surge of happiness, anxiety, or even sadness, remember, it's not just in your head. It's a complex interplay of neurons and neurotransmitters, each contributing to the symphony of emotions that makes us human. Indeed, emotions are a complex interplay of neurons and neurotransmitters. Now, imagine having a personal emotional manager right inside your brain. Intriguing, isn't it? Well, that's precisely the role of the prefrontal cortex. This sophisticated part of our brain is like an orchestra conductor, harmonizing the symphony of our emotions. The prefrontal cortex, located right behind your forehead, is the most evolved part of the brain. It's responsible for what we call executive functions. These include decision-making, problem-solving, and yes, you guessed it, emotional regulation. But how does it manage this feat? Well, think of the prefrontal cortex as a filter. It takes in all the emotional data from the limbic system, your brain's emotional command center, and then decides what to do with it. When you're about to burst into tears at a sad movie, it's your frontal cortex that whispers, hey, it's just a movie, keep it together. When you're seething with anger, it's this part of your brain that steps in saying, count to 10, take a deep breath. It's also your prefrontal cortex that helps you empathize with others, understanding their emotions and responding appropriately. So in essence, it's a key player in our social interactions. But it's not just about keeping a lid on our emotions. The prefrontal cortex also plays a significant role in expressing our feelings. When you're overjoyed at a friend's success, it's your prefrontal cortex that allows you to share in their happiness. When you're moved by a beautiful piece of music, it's this part of your brain that lets you feel and express that emotion. However, it's important to note that the prefrontal cortex doesn't work in isolation. It's part of a complex network, constantly communicating with other parts of the brain. It's this intricate dance between different brain regions that creates our rich emotional lives. Our prefrontal cortex, in essence, helps us keep our cool. It's our brain's very own emotional regulator, helping us navigate the tumultuous seas of our emotions. So next time you're feeling overwhelmed, remember, your prefrontal cortex has got your back. Sometimes, the intricate system managing our emotions can falter, leading to emotional disorders. Just like a well-oiled machine, our brain and its processes can malfunction, leading to a series of emotional and psychological conditions. Let's take a closer look at some of these disorders. First, let's talk about anxiety, a common emotional disorder that can manifest in various forms such as panic disorder, social anxiety, and generalized anxiety disorder. In essence, anxiety is a state of heightened fear response, often disproportionate to the actual threat. The amygdala, our brain's fear center, becomes overactive, and the prefrontal cortex, our emotional regulator, struggles to keep it in check. The resulting imbalance creates a constant state of worry and fear. Depression, another prevalent emotional disorder, paints a stark contrast to anxiety. Instead of an overactive fear response, depression is characterized by a lack of motivation, interest, and an overwhelming sense of sadness. Neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which are usually associated with feelings of happiness and reward, 
are often found in lower levels in people with depression. Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is a condition that can develop following traumatic events. The brain's fear center, the amygdala, becomes highly sensitive, triggering intense emotional responses to reminders of the trauma. The hippocampus, which helps contextualize memories, may also shrink in volume, contributing to flashbacks and the inability to distinguish the past from the present. These disorders, while different in their manifestations, all stem from the same root, an imbalance in our brain's emotional processing system. Understanding the neural mechanisms underlying these conditions allows us to appreciate the complexity of our emotional landscape. It also sheds light on how these disorders are not merely a sign of weakness or a character flaw, but rather a result of intricate neural processes going awry. Understanding these disorders is a crucial step towards developing effective treatments. It's a journey of continued exploration and discovery, where every piece of knowledge brings us closer to helping those who live with these conditions every day. Now, let's delve into some real-life stories that have shaped our understanding of the emotional brain. Our first tale is of Phineas Gage, a railroad worker whose personality dramatically changed after a severe brain injury. This case shed light on the brain's role in personality and emotional regulation. Then there's H.M., or Henry Mollison, who lost his ability to form new memories after his hippocampus was removed. His experience underlined the crucial role this brain region plays in memory and emotion. Clive Waring, who suffered severe amnesia after a viral infection, further emphasized the intricate bond between memory and emotion. Lastly, we have patient SM, a woman whose rare condition damaged her amygdala, the brain's fear center. Her inability to experience fear underscored the amygdala's vital role in processing emotions. These intriguing cases have offered invaluable insights into the neural landscape of emotions. So, why should we care about the neuroscience of emotions? Well, the answer is manifold. For one, understanding the neurobiology of emotions offers invaluable insights into mental health disorders. It's the key to developing more effective treatments and interventions, crucial for those battling the likes of anxiety, depression, depression, or PTSD. Moreover, getting to grips with how our brain deals with emotions enables us to foster better emotion regulation skills. These are essential for maintaining psychological well-being and healthy interpersonal relationships. But it doesn't stop there. Our emotional experiences don't just influence our personal lives, they shape our collective society too. They underpin human behavior, decision-making, and social dynamics. By comprehending the neural mechanisms of emotions, we can make sense of why we react the way we do, why we make certain decisions, and how we interact with others. With this knowledge, we can better comprehend our emotional experiences and navigate the world around us. As we conclude our journey, it's clear that emotions are more than just feelings. They are intricate neurobiological phenomena deeply woven into the fabric of our existence. We've delved into the emotional command center, the limbic system, and discovered how it orchestrates our emotional responses. We've seen how neurotransmitters, the body's chemical messengers, regulate our moods and emotional states. We've also explored how the prefrontal cortex serves as an emotional regulator, influencing how we manage and express our feelings. We ventured into the realm of emotional disorders, understanding how disruptions in these neural pathways can lead to conditions like anxiety, depression, and PTSD. And finally, through the lenses of real-life case studies, we gained valuable insights into the emotional brain. Understanding this emotional landscape is not just about knowledge, but about improving our mental health, our relationships, and ultimately, our lives. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the emotional brain. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, keep exploring.